All right, we're going to be taking a look at solving linear equations today. So we'll start off with our basic linear equations. As the lesson progresses, they'll get more difficult. We can try to cover all the different strategies and techniques in solving these linear equations. So let's take a look at this first one here. Uh, for this linear equation, we're looking to solve for the variable r. I want to get r by itself. There's two things in the way here. We have the minus 5 and the positive 6. To isolate for that variable r here, we're going to first get rid of the positive 6. The reason for that is... When you're performing your bed mass operations, essentially solving, you're doing that in reverse. You're going to take care of addition and subtraction operations first. And then to get rid of this uh, minus 5, the operation between the minus 5 and the variable is multiplication. So we'll have to undo that with division. So first step here is to subtract 6 on both sides. And you can see here I subtracted 6 on both sides of the equation. Now we're going to go ahead and I want to get r by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and divide across by negative 5. And you'll see here I went ahead and divided across by minus 5. And then you get cancellation here. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. We're just left with our variable r. And then typically when you're given a fraction here, this is 2 over negative 5. You push that minus sign either to the numerator or kind of in line with your division symbol. So the answer for this first one is negative two-fifths. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next equation. So solving this next linear equation, again, uh, we want to get rid of the 11 and the minus one-half. Addition and subtraction operations get moved first. Operations connected to your variable happen at the end. So in this case here, I'm going to first go ahead and add one-half to both sides of the equation. And going ahead here and adding one-half to both sides of the equation, I now have 11x equals three-halves plus one-half. This will simplify to become 11x equals two. And then once again, I want to get the 11 out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and have to divide across by 11 on both sides of the equation, giving us x equals 2 over 11. All right, let's look at the next set of problems. All right, moving along here. Now we have to solve the following linear equation. So same idea. I want to get rid of the 7 and the minus 5 over 9. First thing you want to do here is, in general, we should multiply across and get rid of fractions when we can. Uh, you can see here that I have a denominator of 9 here. I'd like to get that fraction out of the way. So if I multiply across by 9, we have the following. So multiplying across by 9, we get 63x minus 5 equals 27. Again, 9 times 7 is our 63. And multiplying across by 9 here cancels. We just get our minus 5. And then 9 times 3 is 27. So now we're going to go ahead and solve for this here. We go ahead and add 5 to both sides. Adding 5 to both sides, the only thing left to do is divide across by 63, giving us x is equal to 32 divided by 63. Taking a look at the next problem here, now we have decimal places here with our values. In this case here, uh, 0.25 is a quarter and 0.5 is a half. So if we write this in terms of fractions, we have the following. Take a look here, we have a bunch of fractions we'd like to eliminate. I can go ahead and multiply across by 4 here. Again, 4 is the uh, smallest number that's going to go ahead and cancel off the 4, 4, and the 2. So multiplying across by 4, we end up getting p plus 1 equals 2. Then we can go ahead and subtract 1 on both sides, getting p equals 1. Again, if you wanted to initially, you did not have to convert this to a fraction and multiply across by 4. If you wanted to, you could have just went ahead and subtracted the 0.25 on both sides and then divided out the 0.25. But in general, it is a good strategy to always get rid of fractions when you can. And this would be an example of when you should do that. All right, let's take a look at another set of problems. All right, taking a look at this problem here. Again, first thing we want to do is get rid of that positive 3, subtracting 3 on both sides. And I went ahead and subtracted 3 on both sides. 11 minus 3 is 8. And now we are right here. Now, in this situation here, we have to get rid of the 2 and the 5. There's a couple of ways you could approach this. If one situation is you could multiply across by 5 over 2 on both sides. But a lot of times what students will do is we're going to first take care of the fraction first, get rid of the denominator. And in this case here, I'm going to multiply across by 5. And you'll see here, multiplying across by 5, I went ahead and multiplied across by 5. And we get cancellation between these two here, leaving us with 2t equals 40. Divide across by 2, giving us t equals 40 divided by 2, and our final answer is t is 20. Let's go ahead and take a look at another linear equation. So for this linear equation, same idea here. We're going to first subtract across by 5. And again, watch your minus signs here. On the right-hand side, I have negative 1 minus 5. That's going to be negative 6. Now, same idea. I want to get rid of the negative 3 quarters here. First thing you want to do is get rid of the, what's in the denominator first. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply across by 4. This minus sign, if you want, you can connect it with the 3 on the top. So multiplying across by 4 here, you can see we put a 4 here and here. We end up getting cancellation. In the top and bottom, 4 divided by 4 is 1, leaving us with z is equal to negative 24 over negative 3. 
And simplifying here, we end up getting z equals 8. So we're going to get in here z equals 8. Let's take a look at a new set of problems. All right, continuing on here. Now we have the idea of distribution being involved here. Now the coefficient here, the 4, is being multiplied by this binomial. So with these sorts of linear equations, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and distribute this 4 into the brackets. And the operation is multiplication. So this will become 4x minus 8 equals 9. Again, 4 times 1, right? The coefficient in front of this x value is a 1. So 4 times 1 is just 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And we do not distribute that 4 to the 9. It is only being multiplied by what is in the brackets here. Now that we have this, we're back to our old style of problems we were working on earlier. I'm going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide across by 4. And end up getting here 17 divided by 4. As a note here, you should always check to make sure your fraction is in fact in lowest terms. In this case here, 17 is a prime number. And we're dividing that by 4. So this is already in lowest terms. The answer is 17 over 4. But we should check in general making sure your final answer is in lowest terms. Continuing on here, let's look at the next problem. All right, let's take a look at the next problem here. So for this one here, we want to solve for x, get x by itself. Before you go ahead and distribute this, you might want to th think about distributing that minus 2 thirds into the brackets. If you do that, you end up incorporating more fractions, and typically we do not want fractions. So the best thing to do is first get rid of this 3 on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply across by 3. Multiplying across by 3 here, you see the 3's cancel off, and I end up getting negative 2 times x plus 1 equals, in this case, this will be an 18. And now we're back to a problem very similar to the one that we have here. Now that I have this, I can go ahead and distribute that minus 2 into the brackets. This gives us minus 2x minus 2 is 18. Then we can go ahead and add 2 to both sides. And we end up getting here minus 2x equals 20. Divide across by minus 2. We end up getting x is 20 divided by negative 2, which reduces to become negative 10. All right, let's take a look at some more problems. Now, in this situation here, we have a variable. The variable we want to solve for, p, on the left and the right-hand side. The first strategy is to bring all the variables to one side and numbers to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and get my variable p on the left-hand side and try to get our numbers over on the right-hand side. Keep in mind the operation in front of the 7 is a positive. This is a positive 7, so I'm going to go ahead and have to subtract 7 on both sides. Likewise, to move that p to the left-hand side of the equation, the operation is addition. I will have to do a subtraction on both sides. So you can see here I get negative 5p minus p equals 6 minus 7. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. This becomes minus 5 minus 1 is going to give us negative 6p. And on the right-hand side, we get 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Now we go ahead and divide across by negative 6. We end up getting p equals negative 1 over negative 6, which is just equal to 1 sixth. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. So for this one here, same idea. I want to get the w by itself. I've got w's on both sides of the equation. I'm going to have to bring this to the left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and have to add 6w to both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side here, we have negative 8w plus 6w simplifies to become negative 2w equals negative 4. Dividing across by negative 2, we get w equals negative 4 divided by negative 2, or w equals 2. All right, that concludes today's lesson on solving linear equations. Thank you. Mm -hmm.